and it's Wayne with you, joined by uh, Ricky Lambert in our Flow Studios. And uh, good to have you on board, Ricky. How are you today? Great, thank you. I want to talk about um, the whole issue of politics surrounding uh, the international travel that has been blocked until at least the middle of next year, according to the Prime Minister. Um, And the whole essence of these things called death rates across the world, uh, how um, the population and the growth of the world's population has led to uh, the significant drop in more recent years of um, the health issues has led to lowering the um, amount of deaths around the world, at least to a very small significance, and then having people live longer has been something that's happened. My dad used to say that anyone that got to three score and ten was doing well. Mm. Well, now we actually get to four score and beyond. Mm. But uh, the Prime Minister is kind of um, entering this debate in a way because he's saying that we need to protect the population from death and dying. Uh, We've got so many people that could die of COVID-19 and so we're going to close the borders to everybody until the middle of next year, until I think we're safe with a vaccine and so on. Is that politics being played, do you think, or is it really truly a health response? Uh, there's definitely pandemic politics at play here. I've been talking about that for a few months now. The the way the governments are playing the closed borders, tough borders rhetoric to get an election outcome. There will be a federal election, funnily enough, maybe just before the middle of next year. Uh, And it's working a treat for premiers uh, when they say they're going to keep the borders closed. It's working a treat with voters who are very fearful of the virus. But go back to the budget night last Tuesday and where the government said in a quite a telling comment that they expected by the end of this year, those who want to be vaccinated will have had that opportunity. And they see that as a benchmark for reopening the economy. So they didn't say we will have full vaccination. They're clearly respecting that some people don't want to get vaccinated. There are people in other parts of the media who are freaking out that people don't want to get vaccinated. They're not interested in getting vaccinated. Uh, And now you've got um, at a business lunch yesterday, the chief executive of Virgin Australia saying, well, we need to open sooner than the middle of next year. We have to accept that some people may die. Yeah, that's right. Jane Herdlicker said that uh, she did not agree with the current stated reopening date of mid-2022 and uh, that the federal government had put this forward uh, and it was part of its budget papers and that she believed with the viable vaccine in place for a large enough portion of Australia's population, the country needed to reopen its borders or risk being left behind by the rest of the world. Um, Is this quite possible that um, that from a tourism point of view and economically, and even if we looked at the situation where we're uh, having the haves and the have-nots of travel with the yes. Prime Minister. We've got cricketers and yep. tennis players and Olympians and even Paralympians where all are being pushed out overseas to be flying the flag for Australia, but they can all come back straight away, except if you are one of the 35,000 other Australians, mm. so, well, then you just have to wait your turn. <laughs> Yeah, there there's, there seems to be double standards here about how people are being allowed back into the country. Uh, the government sort of seems to be making it up as it goes. We're tracking the situation with vets, for instance, veterinarians, that is, that there, there's a huge shortage of vets in regional areas in particular. And last week they granted an exemption for anyone who wants to come to Australia to practice as a vet. So it just seems that they've got this veneer over the top of the economy of, well, we're not going to let anyone back in here because we want to keep people safe from covid But there's plenty of exemptions if it ticks a box for the government to solve a current problem that they're facing. Okay, um, you've studied a bit of the population trends and uh, come up with um, one of the graphs that seems to indicate that where we are right now, uh, we've probably reached a threshold in terms of uh, mortality rates uh, where uh, the world's population is continuing now to get bigger. Uh, As a result, we've got things like COVID-19 and SARS viruses and and in some cases uh, in um, countries in Africa like Ebola and other things that take um, the big swathes of population. We hope not too many big bits because they're deadly viruses. But are we likely to see the mortality rates, in fact, um, increase? That is, more people per thousand will die as the world's population gets bigger. Well, yeah, going back to what I was saying about the budget night, the, the Treasury estimates, somewhere squirreled away there, they would have projections of exactly what they were expecting when the economy was going to open. It's farcical to think that the government doesn't have a date when it wants to reopen the economy because it 
it will know it'll have these projections like this graph I've got in front of me, which shows that by 2018 we had reached, I think, a sweet spot in terms of deaths per thousand people in the world. Uh, allevi- alleviating poverty all over the world has, and better healthcare all over the world, brought that rate down from about 16 per thousand in the 1950s. People remember polio and things like that. We got it down to about six, six per thousand people, and it was already starting to track up before COVID came along. So the world health experts were expecting an steady increase in the global mortality rate, still only to about eight out of a mm. thousand, still half what we had in uh, the 1950s. So COVID didn't come as any surprise to global health officials. They knew that something was coming that was going to start ratcheting that death rate slightly up again. But yet we've got this panic and all of these massive restrictions on people's liberties because of one virus when there are plenty of other reasons people might die, such as the flu. Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, and the numbers that uh, and the death rates in Australia, certainly uh, because uh, we certainly haven't had the uh, massive under a thousand people uh, for Australian deaths. When we consider uh, in some places in the world, like uh, in India, uh, we're getting uh, literally hundreds of thousands of deaths um, occurring uh, in a given week. So this would seem to indicate that we're in a protected place. Is the Prime Minister right to maintain that protection, uh, right to keep us all protected, uh, right to um, maybe keep us protected until the middle of next year? Well, overall across the country, and I was working at a school last year, for instance, we had record attendance rates at school because social distancing was being practised, better hygiene was being practised, and no one was getting sick. So we have had nowhere near as many people dying from the flu, for instance, in Australia. Now, I'd use the example of speed limits. Uh, If you wanted to eliminate deaths on the road, everyone could go at 20 kilometres an hour. You could just ratchet down the restrictions all the way down so everyone's driving so slow that no one's getting hurt on the roads. You go, well, we've saved so many lives on the roads. It just takes you five times as long to get somewhere. Yeah, and and that's what's happening to our economy. Yeah, and the same with you. That example, your grain trucks have to move at 100 kilometres an hour. Your trains have to still go at speeds and so on so that we can get to port those producers and get them onto planes and so on and so forth. Um, so therefore, your economy would be affected if you did bring that example. And, and it's the same thing. I think, with the blocking of the borders. OK, is it political then? So uh, let's say that the election is to be held federally in May of next year and suddenly uh, the Prime Minister has protected us all until June and then suddenly the borders are uh, thrown open for all of us to fly and get on a cruise ship and uh, return to touring like we once did. I mean, is that a bit of uh, a policy that he's put in place just to uh, maybe protect himself because it's 70% popular amongst the electorate right now? Well, the PM, I think, is going to keep pandemic politics on a respirator for as long as possible and keep reminding people that it's still not safe out there, everyone. We've still got to keep you safe. So even come May, if other countries' economies have opened up, and and partly because they've got huge vaccination rates like the UK, people can go to the pub again in the UK. They've been a lot more locked down. He will keep that memory of the pandemic in people's front of people's minds because that's what they know will work for them, particularly with the older voter demographic when it comes to an election. And what they'll do is they'll dangle all these carrots. If you vote, vote for us, we will reopen the economy again. It'll, they will, they'll be expecting that to work a treat for them, and it probably will. Ricky, good to talk to you about it. Uh, I still have a uh, feeling on this that somebody's going to, uh, once this particular pandemic's over, they'll find another new one uh, to uh, make sure that we're all fearful. We'll follow it through again at flownews24.com.au if you want to see more the graph that Ricky has uh, put together. That uh, is where you can find it.